Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to take a few moments to continue our discussion of excitation contraction coupling, but we'll do so by investigating the process referred to as the cross bridge cycle. If you remember, we ended our discussion of excitation contraction coupling with the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And that's exactly where we'll pick up now as we continue our investigation of muscle contractions. And if you'll allow me, let's take a quick break to ensure that we're knowledgeable about what's meant when we use the term thick filament and the term thin filament. First, the word filament means thread-like fiber. And as a result, we have thin thread-like fibers, and we also have thick thread-like fibers. The thin thread-like fibers include actin, troponin, and tropomyosin. So if you can remember AT and T, you'll have it, being that each of these terms begins with those letters. And the remaining filament is the thick filament called myosin. So let's go back to our sarcomere. So now we've returned to the sarcomere and just above it, we'll see the calcium that was released and made available from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And in order for us to get a better understanding of the events that follow this process, let's zoom in to the sarcomere. Now that we've zoomed in, let's identify the components that are now fully visible. First, we have the thick filament, myosin, and extending from it are what we refer to as the myosin heads. And here we have the thin filament, actin, which is shown here as a string of light green circles. And on the sides of the actin filament are actin's active sites. Now interwoven within the actin filament is another thin filament called tropomyosin, shown here in dark green. And lastly, we also have our third and final thin filament called troponin. So going back for just a moment, we've had the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And what we'll see is calcium binding to troponin. And it's this action that leads to another action that's not shown here. And that is the shift of tropomyosin so that actin's active sites are exposed. So this means that initially tropomyosin was covering actin's active sites. Now that the active sites on actin are exposed, the myosin heads are able to attach to it. And this forms what we call a cross bridge. Now the attached myosin head then pulls the actin filament towards the center of the sarcomere and this is what we call the power stroke. Now, as this occurs, the myosin head releases a form of energy, and that's seen here as ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, and phosphate. Now, after their release, the myosin head remains attached to actin's active site. But, as shown here, the myosin heads return to a resting position once ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, attaches to them. So now you may be wondering, well, why is this called the cross bridge cycle? Well, we'll have a continuation of this process, hence the term cycle, as long as energy in the form of ATP and calcium are readily available in the body. So here's the cycle in notation form. A myosin cross bridge is formed, power stroke occurs, which leads to the shortening of the sarcomere, the release of energy in the form of ADP and phosphate, followed by the attachment of ATP to the myosin head to relax the cross bridge. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful, and if you loved this video, you'll most certainly love the next one.